Florida loves its manatees. Here in Crystal River, it's practically an obsession. Nearly everywhere you look, there's a manatee looking back at you. On shirts, on buildings, and even on license plates. But despite their popularity, times are tough for these lovable beasts. Recent surveys show that Florida's manatee population is steadily declining. And today, there may be less than 3,500 left in the wild. Of those that remain, four out of five bear the scars of encounters with boat propellers. But what's most puzzling is why manatees don't swim away from the noisy motors of oncoming boats. Dr. Edmund Gerstein has been puzzling over this question for nearly three decades. Ed began to unravel the mystery with the help of two captive bred manatees trained to perform simple tasks. Well, we asked a simple question, is it possible that manatees can't hear the boats? Or if they can hear them, they can't tell which direction they're coming from. So my wife and I actually set up a series of experiments to test the manatees hearing to see exactly what they could hear. What the Gersteins discovered was astonishing. The manatees seem confused by the low frequency sounds made by motorboats. But when confronted with certain high-pitched sounds, they responded almost instantly. What we found was that manatees have very good hearing, but their hearing is at higher frequencies than what anyone expected. Actually, the animals hear fairly poorly at low frequencies. And unfortunately for them, slow-moving boats produce primarily very low frequencies. Now, after nearly 20 years of research, Ed and his wife, Laura, have an innovative idea. Could they develop an alarm that exploits the manatee's best hearing abilities? Flashcards are in. Now it's time to put it to the test. Boy one's all set to go for deployment. Ed and his team have secured special permits to conduct trials in the restricted waterways near NASA's Cape Canaveral. The team sets buoys in the water, equipped with underwater microphones and digital sound recorders. Being naturally inquisitive, manatees soon move in to inspect the buoys. And when they do, Ed and his team approach them in boats. The drivers are trained to prevent collisions. But will they need to? The boats are equipped with new alarms. They are emitting a high-pitched sound that Ed believes the manatees will hear. Now, as you can see, one camera is capturing the wide-angle view. The visuals. Back in the lab, Ed and his assistant Josiah review video of the experiments. Normally, manatees will not move to avoid a boat until the very last moment, which is often too late. But when Ed's vessel sounds the alarm, the manatee's reaction is clear. You can see the animal coming to frame here. Yeah, look at that. And he starts to orient at about, what would you say that is? Oh, uh, 75 feet, about 24 meters. That's great. And now he's taking off rather quickly. Yeah. This is a successful alarm run. Yeah, it's really good. You can definitely tell the animal reacts. Again. And again. And again. We've got 17 alarm runs, and for those alarms, we've got 100% reaction. We've got animals reacting way before the boat gets there. And we've got over 65 silent runs, where 97% of the time, the animals haven't reacted at all. The alarm is a success. Ed hopes that someday all boats in manatee-filled waters will be equipped with similar devices. In a sense, if we were to put this device on the boat, which would be very inexpensive, only about $125, it's a user-based tax that the boaters would gladly pay if they could put this on their boat and maybe get to an area a little bit quicker, and more importantly, uh, protect the animal as they're going. 